Hey guys, we're wrapping some polynomials and I bet you've been looking forward to this all day, right? Okay, so we're gonna follow three steps basically with an optional fourth step, okay? Which we will talk about once we get there, okay? Our first step is going to be to factor and find our zeros. Our second step is to figure out the end behavior of our graph. And our third step is to figure out our multiplicities. Okay, and then we have the optional fourth step we'll talk about once we get there, okay? All right, good news is, guess what? We already factored, isn't that nice? Okay, so we're going to factor, well, it is factored, and then find zeros, okay? So when I say find zeros, what I really mean is we want to know where our graph crosses the x-axis, okay? And that's where y equals zero, right? So that would be me setting this whole thing equal to zero, right? So when I have this whole thing set equal to zero, what you end up doing is setting each parenthesis equal to zero, okay? We could set the negative three equal to zero, but that's not true. It doesn't really matter, okay? So I'm going to set each of these equal to zero, okay? So these are my zeros. So I'm going to have x minus five equals zero. I add five to both sides and end up with x equals five. That is one of my zeros that I can go ahead and come put on my graph, one, two, three, four, five, right there. I know my graph crosses right there. Then I'm gonna set this guy equal to zero, x plus one equals zero. I subtract one from both sides and get x equals negative one. So that will be right there. And then I've got x plus six equals zero. Subtract six from both sides and I get x equals negative six as another zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. Okay, so those are my zeros. I know that my graph crosses those points, but okay, what does it do from there, right? <laughs> so the next thing we're going to figure out, second step is our end behavior, okay? I'm gonna show you a nice little wordy thing, okay? If this is helpful for you, great. Take a screenshot of it. If you're like, just tell me, don't show me, or I don't know. Show me. Don't tell me. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to show you. Okay. So what we do to figure out the end behavior is for the right side of my graph. So I want to know if from this point it goes up or down, right? To figure that out, I look at the leading coefficient. Okay. That is this guy right here. And all we really care about is if it is positive or negative. Okay. If it's positive, my graph's going to go up. If it's negative, it's going to go down. Okay, that was me pointing down. I don't know if you could see that, okay? So in this case, we've got negative. So I know that this graph is going to end down. I'm gonna do it in pencil so it doesn't interfere with my graph, okay? So I know that the right side of my graph ends down, okay? Next, I need to know what the left side does, right? From this point, do I go up or down, right? So what we do for that is to look at our degree, okay? We're looking at the highest exponent which you might be like, oh, I don't even see any exponents, lady. Okay, I need to imagine if I were to multiply this all together, I'm not going to, but if I were to multiply FOIL all of these out, what would my highest exponent be, right? If I do X times X, I would end up with X squared, right? And then other things would happen, but I multiply that X squared by that X and end up with X cubed or x to the third, right? So if I were to multiply all these out, the highest exponent I would have would be x to the third, okay? So three is my highest exponent, but all we really care about is if it's odd or even, okay? If it's even, it's going to end the same direction as the right side. So in this case, if it were even, it would end down. But in our case, it's a three, it's odd. So it's going to end the opposite way of the right side. So since the right side is down, the left side is going to go up, okay? So from here, what happens? Great, I know it ends, I know the end behavior, okay? <laughs> Our third step is to look at multiplicities, okay? So in this case, all of these have a multiplicity of one because there's only one of each, okay? If on here, I'm gonna do it in pencil again, so you just know this is like, a what if situation, okay? If I had another x plus six here, okay? You could write it like that or just have a squared here, right? If I had two of those, then this negative six would have a multiplicity of two, okay? 
And if I had another one, pretend I had X times six times three times, then it would have a multiplicity of three. Okay. So all of these guys have a multiplicity of one, but I do want you to know what that means, what, which maybe you already did. And you're like, lady, just keep going with your video. Um, anyways, if you want to see an example where not all of them have a multiplicity of one, I'll link one in the corner for you. But all of these guys have multiplicity of one, which means all of these are going to go straight through this point, okay? Because they are odd multiplicities, okay? If you have an even multiplicity, like two, four, six, that means that your graph bounces off of the point that has that multiplicity, okay? Whether it be up or down, it doesn't go through the point, but it bounces, okay? And again, in that example I linked earlier, earlier you'll be able to see that, okay? So, for these guys, since they all have an odd multiplicity of one, my graph is just going to go through each point with no bouncing. So we're going to go a little something like, whoo, like that. So I know it ends up on the left. It goes through all these points and it ends on the right down. Okay. Now my optional fourth step, okay, would be, you'd actually want to do it before you drew this part, sorry. But my optional fourth step is to plug in some other points, okay? Such as zero and see where that ends up on the y-axis. Or to plug in two or to plug in negative four, right? Because this is just a rough sketch, I'm not too worried about how exactly low and high these curves are, okay? That's why I actually didn't put tick marks on the y-axis because I'm not too worried right now in this rough sketch about how how curvy those are, right? How, how far down or up they go. That's something you'll probably come across later on. But if you do want to know where those cross, you are welcome to plug in some more points, okay? All right. I hope this made sense. I will plug... Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I will link some more examples if you need them. Thank you.